Hi scholars, today we are going to look at TEEK 4.3F. It says I can evaluate the reasonableness of sums and differences of fractions using benchmark fractions 0, 1 fourth, 1 half, 3 fourths, and 1 referring to the same whole. So this basically means you can figure out the estimation of sums and differences of fractions using benchmark fractions. So benchmark fractions mean is you have an idea of what zero is, and that's basically nothing, or close to zero. You could have just a little bit. One-fourth, this is one-fourth right here. One-half, three-fourths, which you're going to need three of these, and one whole. Okay, and right here I have set up my fractions um, because I do not have an extra fourth to show this. Actually, wait, I do, sorry. I want you to look at this so you have an idea. So this is nothing. This is zero. One fourth, one half, three fourths, and one whole. We are going to look at a bunch of different fractions and decide where would it go on a number line, which one is it close to, and then give a reasonable or estimation of where it could be. So some of them will be equivalent. Like I might say 6 twelfths, and you know that's equivalent to half. Or I might say something like, seven eighths, which is close to eight eighths, which is a one whole. So we will look at all the different pieces on how to do that. And I will show you a bunch of different tricks. So let's get started. First thing I did was draw a number line. We're going to call this side zero. We're going to call this side one whole. So if I were to say put half on there, which would be this, you would obviously put it right in the middle because half is the middle of anything. It's cutting something in half. So then this one whole bar here would be right here. So I'm going to put that right next to that. and I'm going to put my half right here. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you, where do you think one-fourth would be? Well, one-fourth means it's the first piece out of four whole pieces. So, you could easily cut this into four pieces. That's piece one, piece two, piece three, piece four. So, if this is piece one, this would be one-fourth. So then that would go right there. Obviously, the more you get, you cover onto the, the number line, the bigger the fraction bar will be because you are getting close to completely filling up your fraction. So if I had two fourths, that would, this would be one fourth, this would be two fourths, which is equivalent to half. So then this would be three-fourths. So then I'm going to just stack. I hope it'll stay. It's going to actually end up covering it, but that's okay. And so this is called benchmark fractions. You have an idea where one-fourth is. One-fourth is between zero and half. Half is halfway between zero and one whole. Three-fourths is between one half and one whole. These are benchmark fractions. You have to know where they belong on the number on a number line because when we talk about other fractions, we need to know where those other fractions would go and what are they close to. 
Benchmark is like an idea, a general idea of where things could be. So let's start looking at some examples. First thing I did was draw a number line. We're going to call this side 0. We're going to call this side 1 whole. So if I were to say put half on there, which would be this, you would obviously put it right in the middle because half is the middle of anything. It's cutting something in half. So then this one whole bar here would be right here. So I'm going to put that right next to that. And I'm going to put my half right here. Okay? Now, I'm going to ask you, where do you think one-fourth would be? Well, one-fourth means it's the first piece out of four whole pieces. So you could easily cut this into four pieces. That's piece one, piece two, piece three, piece four. So if this is piece one, this would be one-fourth. So then that would go right there. Obviously, the more you get, you cover onto the, the number line, the bigger the fraction bar will be because you are getting close to completely filling up your fraction. So if I had two fourths, that would, this would be one fourth, this would be two fourths, which is equivalent to half. So then this would be three fourths. So then I'm going to just stack. I hope it'll stay. It's going to actually end up covering it, but that's okay. And so this is called benchmark fractions. You have an idea where one-fourth is. One-fourth is between zero and half. Half is halfway between zero and one whole. Three-fourths is between one-half and one whole. These are benchmark fractions. You have to know where they belong on the number on a number line because when we talk about other fractions, we need to know where those other fractions would go and what are they close to. Benchmark is like an idea, a general idea of where things could be. So let's start looking at some examples. Let's start with 1 eighth. So when you put it here, you notice that 1 eighth is less than 1 half. So obviously if I try to put it here, you know 1 eighth doesn't belong here, it doesn't belong here, it doesn't belong here. I notice it is smaller than 1 fourth. So 1 eighth probably goes around there. In fact, 1 eighth is half of 1 fourth. So I know 1 eighth actually is going to go right there. And I can prove it. If that's 1 eighth, then this must be 2 eighths, then this must be 3 eighths, this is going to be 4 eighths, and that's true because 4 eighths is equivalent to half, so I know I'm doing this correctly. This would be 5 eighths, 6 eighths is equivalent to 3 fourths, 7 eighths, and then obviously 8 eighths, which is equivalent to one whole. Okay. So hope you're getting an idea of how this is going to work. So when someone says 1 eighth, what is that about? It's close to 0, but it's also close to 1 fourth. So you have an idea where it could be. Suppose someone gave you something like 1 twelfth. If you notice, one twelfth is smaller than one eighth size wise. Okay, so I know one twelfth is somewhere here. So then I have two twelfths, three twelfths, four twelfths, five twelfths. I know this would be six twelfths. 7 twelfths, 8 twelfths, 9 twelfths, 10 twelfths, 11 twelfths, 12 twelfths would be right here. I'm not worried about labeling the entire number line. 
I just want you to see a general idea that one twelfth is so tiny that it is very close to zero. So it's like saying I almost have nothing. Okay, if I had 12 twelfths, or actually let's, let's look at it differently. If I had 11 twelfths, I'm going to grab all my twelfths. I'll show it to you in a second. If I had 12 twelfths, or sorry, if I had 11 twelfths, I am very close to one hole. Do you see that? 11 twelfths. So if someone said, what is 11 twelfths about? I'm going to say it's about one hole. Let's just estimate that it's a right around here, 11 twelfths, because it almost filled the entire bar. So 11 twelfths, I could say, is close to one hole. But if they said 1 twelfth, I'm going to say it's close to zero. I hope this is making some sense. What if I said 5 twelfths? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm going to move those pieces here. If you notice, 5 twelfths is very close to almost being 1 half. So it is safe to say 5 twelfths is about 1 half. That's a benchmark. That's a reasonableness. Okay. So let's look at some addition and subtraction questions someone could ask and help us determine what the answer could be. Let's look at this example here. Sarah 